The Biden campaign has released a new ad highlighting Donald Trump's attacks on Nikki Haley in an effort to attract her supporters. Let's take a look. Bird brain. I call it bird brain. Nikki Haley has made an unholy alliance with rhinos, never Trumpers, Americans for no prosperity. She's sitting there like... She's gone crazy. She's a very angry person. She is not presidential timber. I don't need votes. We have all the votes we need. She is, she's gone haywire. There aren't that many never Trumpers anymore. How do you bring these Nikki Haley voters back into the town? I'm not sure we need too many. Joining us now, White House reporter for The Wall Street Journal, Ken Thomas. Ken has agreed to appear under the condition that I not bring up the New York Mets. Ken, good to see you this morning. So let's talk about this effort from the Biden campaign, because there had been some recent criticism about the lack of outreach from Biden to some of these moderate or, or never Trump Republicans, Chris Christie, Nikki Haley among them. But this is a square effort to try to get Haley's voters. Trump hasn't tried to bring them into his tent what does the Biden camp think they can do? Yeah, good morning, Jonathan. You know, this is probably the most overt effort by the Biden campaign to reach those Nikki Haley supporters. There's been a lot of behind the scenes work to connect with their donors to try to bring some of those on board. Um, but, you know, really, this ad is about reaching some of the Republicans who voted in in the primaries in battleground states like North Carolina, like Nevada, like Michigan, who supported Haley and might be of use in a general election. I, I think there's certainly skepticism among some of the pollsters I speak to that that these voters would come over to Biden in large numbers. I mean, Haley's pitch to a lot, uh, some of these voters was focused on Biden's age and the concerns that she had. So it's not like this is a slam dunk for them. But I think, you know, you know, in a marginal tight race in some of these battleground states, Haley's supporters could be helpful. And, you know, the key thing here is that Haley has not issued an endorsement yet. We don't know if she's going to endorse Trump or not. And so some of the some of her voters could be free agents as a result. So let's talk about the possibility of third party candidates. A third party candidate could be a home for some Nikki Haley voters. The Biden campaign has been focusing on the more and more of late, the threat posed perhaps by Robert F. Kennedy Jr., uh, as well as no labels, which is still struggling to find a, a person at the top of the ticket, now dealing, of course, with the death of one of its founders, Joe Lieberman. Uh, Ken, give us your sense as to where things stand for no labels and other third party bids. No Labels is really at a crossroads right now. You know, you mentioned uh, they, they lost their founding chairman in Joe Lieberman last week. Chris Christie said that he could not uh, be involved with their organization. He, he would not run as, as a third party candidate. So they're really at a loss for finding the right candidate to head the ticket. Uh, a lot of the sources I've spoken with around the organization have identified April 15th as an important time to have that ticket in place because they've, they're on the ballot in 19 states. But to, to take that next step, they're going to need, you know, an actual ticket to be able to to qualify for the ballot in, 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 in some of these key battleground states. And ballot access really is just, you know, the most essential ingredient really for a third party candidate at this point, because if you're not on the ballot, you're not relevant. And so, you know, they're, they're really just try, right now struggling to find uh, a, a candidate who can lead the ticket. You know, they've been looking at Republicans as, as the likely top of the ticket because it would insulate them from some of the criticism that they faced about, you know, trying to elect uh, Trump in the end. But, you know, it's it's a it's a real mm -hmm. uh, very much a crossroads, I think, for the organization. Yeah. And Ken's done reporting on no labels. You should check out in The Wall Street Journal. So, um, Ken, let's talk about uh, the, where the Biden campaign stands. March, I believe they deem March a month of action or something like that. It has come and gone. And it was a good month for the president, a well-received State of the Union address, uh, a, a blitz of battleground state travel far more than Donald Trump's been doing and a huge fundraising total capped off by that Radio City Music Hall event. Uh, a few days ago. So as we now turn the counter and we're in April, where do the Biden campaign, how do they feel about where things are going and what's their next move? They're just trying to keep the momentum going. They've got the advantage on money right now. And I think right now they feel like a lot of their voters are starting to come home, that there's consolidation among the base and they want to keep that going in the battleground states. Yeah, Biden campaign with momentum. Donald Trump, meanwhile, two weeks from today, has to appear in the Manhattan courtroom at the start of a criminal trial.
White House reporter for The Wall Street Journal, Ken Thomas. Terrific reporting as always. Thank you for joining us. And hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it you tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.